What I'm not going to teach tonight is what uh, uh, you'll hear a lot, especially if you go out sowing, it comes up over and over and over again that if you truly are saved, if you really, really, really meant it, that you will have a change in your life, that God will force you to have the works, that God will force you to change your life around, that you will head in another direction because God is making you head in another direction. That is a false, wicked, ungodly, satanic doctrine. And here's the thing about this Calvinistic type stuff, okay? It's, It's purpose. The devil uses Calvinism to keep people from getting saved. That's what he uses it for. It's a tool to keep people from getting saved. Because if your gospel message includes, um, and if you really do mean it, you'll change your life around, that person's going to try to change their life around to be saved. And we see them all the time. We go out soul winning, we knock doors, we knock doors, and they say, well, yeah, if you really did mean it. And look, this is a self-righteousness. That's what they're saying. I did it. I changed my life around. And it's, it's, they're propping themselves up, and they've abandoned the gospel, which is by grace through faith. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter number 3, because one of the things that they'll say is that there's no such thing as a carnal Christian. There's no such thing as a carnal Christian. God's going to force you. He's going to force righteousness in you and on you, and you are going to just do things that you've never thought you could do before. It's just the power of God. He's making you do it. And I believe in the power of God, but I believe in a willing vessel. I believe that you have to be willing and wanting to serve God, and if you are, he'll use you. But as, as he says in many places, that there are vessels of honor and vessels of dishonor, and if any man purge himself from these, he is a vessel unto honor and sanctified and meet for the master's use. Look at verse number one. He says, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. Verse number three, he says, For ye are yet, what? Carnal. Carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? So who, who is Paul talking to? If you want to know who he's talking to, just flip back to chapter number one and look at verse number one. He says, Paul, called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and Sosthenes, our brother, under the church of God, which is at Corinth. Don't stop there. He says, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, with all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. The Bible says, for whosoever will, uh, shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And he just said that he's talking to saints. He's talking to them in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. So in chapter number three, still talking to them. Still talking to saved Christians, still talking to people that have uh, uh, called upon the name of the Lord, Jesus Christ. And he says, you're yet carnal. This is what Paul said, Romans 7, look at verse number 14. He says, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal. He didn't say I was carnal. He said I am carnal. Paul said that. So are we going to question the salvation of the apostle Paul too? If you're really saved... You're not going to be carnal. Paul said he was carnal. Paul said that the saved people at the church of Corinth were carnal. And they'll say there's no such thing as a carnal Christian. Paul said he was carnal. He said he was sold under sin. He said, I am carnal. Present tense. Not I was. I am carnal. He says in verse number 15, For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would... That do I not, but what I hate, that I do. That do I. All right? So look, you should hate sin. Amen. You should live this life walking, not as men who love to the darkness. They love darkness. No, we should love the light. We should walk in the light, even as he is in the light. But here's the thing. Paul said, sometimes I do the things that I hate. 
And you know what I know Paul hated? I know Paul hated sin. I know Paul loved God and he wanted to keep God's commandments because that's the love of God, that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. They're not grievous. God knows what's best for us, so he set the law in such a way that it would be best for you to do everything that God said to do and to not do everything that God said not to do. That would be the best thing for us. They're not grievous. The commandments of God are not grievous. And we should love God's commandments. We should love the law of God. And we should hate sin. But sometimes Paul said, I do what I hate. He said in verse 16, if then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. The law is good. It's the best thing for us. He says in verse 17, now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. That's interesting. Because Paul's talking about his flesh as if it's separate from him. And if we continue, he says, for to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. And this is the struggle that we're all going to deal with. This is it. As a Christian, somebody that's saved, somebody that's studying their Bible, somebody that has a desire to serve God, somebody that wants to win the loss to Christ, you're still living in this present world, aren't you? You're still dragging your flesh around, aren't you? All the same desires that you had before still kind of talk to you from time to time. Still trying to try to draw you back into a life maybe you used to live. And he says in verse number 20, or I'm sorry, verse number 19, For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Okay, he's just saying it over again in another way. He says, Now, if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Now, Paul's talking about the old Paul and the new Paul. The old Paul and the new Paul. So the old Paul is his flesh, but the new Paul is that which was born again. 